Do you know friends that at Toyota, management was grappling with high defect rates in car door assemblies. In response to this, their product manager turned to Six Sigma, a quality improvement methodology pioneered by engineer Bill Smith at Motorola in the 1980s, which specifically designed to minimize errors by identifying and eliminating variability in manufacturing processes. The team started by thoroughly collecting and analyzing defect data, identifying faulty machinery, human error as the main culprits. Based on these insights, targeted improvements like worker retraining and equipment upgrades were implemented. These changes were initially tested in a controlled environment to ensure effectiveness. This methodological approach cut a defect rates by 50% within a year and significantly boosting productivity and customer satisfaction. Companies seeking this remarkable result started adopting Six Sigma methodology and the demand for Six Sigma certified individuals increased significantly since the last decade. Typically, salary for Six Sigma certified individual ranges from $65,000 to over $100,000 annually, with variations based on role, industry, and geography. Six Sigma built professionals can earn in the higher end of this range, reflecting the value of their advanced expertise and ability to drive significant improvement in the complex processes. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. Now, before we move on, just a quick info, guys. Simply Learn has got a certification program in Lean Six Sigma. You can master efficiency and drive quality with Six Sigma methodologies. You can gain in-depth knowledge of Six Sigma methodologies, tools, and techniques. You can equip yourselves with the skills to lead process improvement projects effectively. Exclusive masterclasses in generative AI for quality management and for stimulation assessment for light project 35 PDUs. And there is also exam pass guarantee study plan. And you are also going to get free practice test and bonus course. This certification is accredited by ISAC. So hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. Now before we move on and learn more about Six Sigma methodology, I request you guys that do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon for further updates. So here's the agenda of our today's session. We are going to start with what is Six Sigma. Moving ahead, we are going to discuss about what is Lean Six Sigma. Then we will discuss the five key principles of Six Sigma, the Six Sigma methodology and the Six Sigma process of business transformation. Moving ahead, we will have a thorough discussion on Six Sigma techniques and the Six Sigma tools. And at the end, we are going to conclude our session with a discussion on Six Sigma levels. So guys, let's start with what is Six Sigma. The term Six Sigma refers to a statistical measure of how a process deviates from perfection. A process that operates at Six Sigma has a failure rate of only 0.0034%, which means it produces virtually no defects. Six Sigma was developed by Motorola in 1980s and it has since been adopted by many other companies around the world. It includes like General Electric, Toyota and Amazon. It is used in industries such as manufacturing, healthcare, finance and service industries to improve customer satisfaction, reduce cost and increase profits. Six Sigma is basically a set of methodologies and tools used to improve business processes by reducing defects and errors, and also minimizing variation and increasing quality efficiency. The goal of Six Sigma is to achieve a level of quality that is nearly perfect with only 3.4 defects per million opportunities. This is achieved by using a structured approach called DMAIC, which means define, measure, analyze, improve, and control to identify and eliminate causes of variation and improve processes. Six Sigma is a disciplined and data-driven approach, widely used in project management to achieve process improvement and minimize defects. It provides a systematic frameworks to identify and eliminate variations that can impact the project performance. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding what is Six Sigma. Now let us move on to our next part. That is, what is Lean Six Sigma? So guys, Lean Six Sigma is a methodology that combines two powerful improvement techniques, that is Lean and Six Sigma. 
Lean focuses on minimizing waste and maximizing efficiency by identifying and eliminating non-value adding activities. This involves streamlining processes, reducing defects, improving quality, and optimizing resources to deliver more value with less effort. On the other hand, Six Sigma is a statistical approach to process improvement that aims to reduce variations and defects by using data-driven decision making. It involves like defining, measuring, analyzing, improving, and controlling processes to achieve consistent and predictable result. So guys, by combining the strength of these two methodologies, Lean Six Sigma provides a comprehensive approach to process improvement that can be applied to any industry or sector. This technique is widely used in manufacturing, healthcare, finance, and service industries to improve efficiency and reduce the cost and enhance the customer satisfaction. Now let us discuss about the five key principles of Six Sigma. Six Sigma has its foundations in five key principles. The first one that is, is focus on the customer. This is based on a popular belief that the customer is king. The primary goal is to bring maximum benefit to the customer. For this, a business needs to understand its customer, their needs, and what drives their sales or loyalty. This requires establishing a standard quality as defined by what the customer or market demands. Measure the value stream and find your problem. So guys, map the steps in a given process to determine the areas of waste. Get the data to discover the specific problem area that is to be addressed or transformed. Have clearly defined goals for data collection, including defining the data to be collected, the reason for the data gathering, and insights to be expected. Ensuring the accuracy of measurements and establishing a standardized data collection system. The third one that we have is get rid of the junk. Once the problem is identified, make changes to the processes to eliminate variation, thus removing defects. Remove activities in the process that do not add to the customer value. If the value stream doesn't reveal where the problem lies, tools are used to help discover the outliers and problem areas. Streamline functions to achieve quality control and efficiency. The fourth one is keep the ball rolling. Involve all stakeholders, adopt a structured process where your team contributes and collaborates their varied expertise for problem solving. Six Sigma processes can have a great impact on an organization. So the team has to be proficient in the principle and methodologies used. And finally, we have ensuring a flexible and responsive ecosystem. The essence of Six Sigma is business transformation and change. When a faulty or inefficient process is removed, it calls for a change in the work practice and employees approach. A robust culture of flexibility and responsiveness to changes in procedures can ensure streamlined project implementation. The people and departments involved should be able to adapt to change with ease. So to facilitate this, process should be designed for quick and seamless adoption. Ultimately, the company that has an eye fixed on the data examines the bottom line periodically and adjusts its processes where necessary and can gain a competitive edge. So these were some of the five key principles of Six Sigma. Now let's move on and discuss about the Six Sigma methodologies. The two main Six Sigma methodologies are DMAIC and DMADV. Each has its own set of recommended procedures to be implemented for business transformation. If we talk about DMAC, it's a data-driven method used to improve existing products or services for better customer satisfaction. It is the acronym for the five phases like define, measure, and improve. The next one is DMA-DV. If I talk about DMA-DV, it is a part of design for the Six Sigma process, which is used to redesign different processes of product manufacturing or service delivery. Now let us understand each one of them one by one. So as I've told you earlier that DMAC is a data-driven method used for improving existing product or services for better customer satisfaction. And it involves five phases, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. DMAC is applied in manufacturing of a product or delivery of service. Whereas if you talk about DMA-DV, as I've told you earlier, it is also a part of a Six Sigma process, which is used to define or redesign different process of product manufacturing or service delivery. The five phases of DMA-DV are define, measure, analyze, design, and validate. 
DMADB is employed where existing processes do not meet customer conditions, even after optimization or when it is required to develop new methods. It is executed by Six Sigma Green Belts and Six Sigma Black Belts under the supervision of Six Sigma Master Black Belts. The two methodologies are used in different businesses setting and professionals seeking to master these methods and application scenarios would do well to take an online certificate program taught by industry experts. Now we are going to discuss about the Six Sigma process of business transformation. Although Six Sigma uses various methods to discover deviations and solve problems, the DMAC is the standard methodologies used in Six Sigma practitioner. The first one that we have is Six Sigma uses a data-driven management process used for optimizing and improving business processes. The underlying framework is a strong customer focus and robust use of data and statistics to conclude. Now, each of the above phases have business transformation as several steps. The first one is defined. The Six Sigma process begins with a customer-centric approach. Step one would be the business problem is defined from the customer's perspective. Then the goals are set. What do you want to achieve? What are the resources you will choose to achieve these goals? And finally, in defining, the third would be mapping the process. Verify with the stakeholders that you are on the right track. Then comes measure. The second phase is focused on the metrics of the projects and the tools used in the measurement. How can you improve? How can you quantify this? So for this, step one would be measure your problem in numbers or with supporting data. Step two would be defining performance yardstick. Fix the limits for why and in step three, evaluate the measurement system to be used. You can ask questions like, can it help you to achieve your outcome? The next one is analyze. The third phase analyzes the process to discover influencing variables. In this, the step one would be determine if your process is efficient and effective. Does the process help you achieve what you need? Then you move to quantifying your goals in numbers. For instance, reduce your defective goods by 20%. And finally, in step three, identify variations using historical data. The next phase is improve. This process investigates how the changes in X impacts Y. This phase is where you identify how you can improve the process implementation. For one, in step one, you have identify possible reasons. Test to identify which of the X variables identified in the process three influence Y. In step two, discover relationships between the variables. Step three would be establish process tolerance, defined as a precise value that certain variables can have and still fall within acceptable boundaries. For instance, the quality of any given product. Which boundaries needs X to hold Y within specifications? What operating conditions can impact the outcome? Process tolerances can be achieved by using tools like robust optimization and validation set. And finally, we have control. In this final phase, you determine the final performance objective identified in the previous phase is well implemented that your design improvements are sustainable. For this, the step one would be validate the measurement system to be used. Establish process capability. Is the goal met? For instance, will the goal of reducing defective goods by 20% be achieved? Once the previous step is satisfied, implement the processes. So these were some of the Six Sigma process of business transformation. Now, we are going to understand about the Six Sigma techniques. So guys, these are some of the Six Sigma techniques like the 5S methodology, value stream mapping, Kaizen events, just-in-time production, Kanban systems, Poka yoke or error proofing. Next one is total productive maintenance. And finally, we have continuous flow. So these were some of the Six Sigma techniques. Now let us discuss about some of the Six Sigma tools. The first one that we have is all over here is cause and effect analysis. Then you can use flow chart. Moving ahead, you are going to get a Pareto chart. Next is histogram. Moving ahead in the category of Six Sigma tools, in the industry, they also apply check sheets and control charts. So these were some of the Six Sigma tools that are applied in the industry. Now we are going to move ahead and discuss about the Six Sigma levels. So guys, the Six Sigma training levels conform to specified training requirements, the education criteria, job standards, and eligibility. The first one that we have is white belt. This is a simpler stage where any newcomer can join. People work with teams on problem-solving projects. 
Here, the participant is required to understand the basic Six Sigma concepts. Moving ahead, we have the yellow belt. Here, the participant takes a part as a project team member. He reviews the process improvement, gains understanding of the various methodologies and DMAC. Finally, we have the green level. This level of expertise requires the following criteria. Minimum of three years of full-time employment, understand the tools and methodologies used for problem solving, hands-on experience on projects involving some level of business transformation. Then the guidance for black belt projects in data collection and analysis. Leads the green belt projects or teams. So these are some things that come under the green belt. Now moving ahead, we are going to discuss about the black belt. So this level includes the following. Minimum of three years of full-time employment, work experience in a core knowledge area, proof of completion of a minimum two Six Sigma projects, demonstration of expertise at applying multivariate metrics to diverse business change settings. Then you also have to lead diverse team in the problem solving projects and training and coaching projects teams. And finally, we have master black belt. To reach at this level, a candidate must be in a position of black belt certification, have a minimum of five years of full-time employment or proof of completion of a minimum of 10 Six Sigma projects. A proven work portfolio with individual specific requirements as given here, for instance, like have coached and trained green belts and black belts, developed key metrics and strategies, have worked on organizations, Six Sigma technologists and internal business transformation advisor. So guys, these were some of the Six Sigma levels. So if we talk about what are the Six Sigma career choices and salary prospects, then Six Sigma is widely adopted by many industries in the domain of manufacturing, healthcare, finance, and retail. And it also offers a range of career opportunities with attractive salary prospects. So guys, this is a very amazing career choice and you can definitely go for Six Sigma certification. That was all for today's video, guys. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's video on Six Sigma methodology. Thank you guys for watching this video on Six Sigma methodology. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's video. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.